Well, welcome everyone. We are live with another episode of Level Up Law, where every Tuesday at noon, South Carolina Legal Services is leveling up your legal knowledge about an area of law that we practice in. Um, so today we're excited to have with us Christine Curry. Christine is the Asian American and Pacific Islander Program Coordinator at the South Carolina Commission on Minority Affairs. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you, Susan. We really appreciate you being here um, and excited to um, share with our viewers some information, not only about um, Asian American Pacific Islander uh, Heritage Month, which is in the month of May, but also about what the uh, commission does in um, that area. And you're going to hopefully share with us some of the programs and things that you, you've been working on and sort of what your job entails as the uh, program coordinator. So um, we're excited to have you here. But before we get started, I do want to remind our viewers that this is not going to be any kind of legal advice. It's just general information for the public. And we're excited uh, to be able to observe um, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and have Christine on the show. Um, I do want to also remind you that we, of course, we're live right now, but we, as always, uh, with our producer, Kenneth Elliott, uh, he will uh, record this, the episode and um, uh, upload it to our YouTube channel where we have a Level Up Law playlist with all of the over 160 episodes um, that we have uh, from our Level Up Law show that is going to be four years old in June. So um, welcome everyone. I'm Susan Ingalls. I'm a senior staff attorney here at South Carolina Legal Services and the host of uh, Level Up Law. And so now that we've got all the preliminaries out of the way, Christine, welcome. Um, and I'm really excited to um, have our viewers hear about what is the South Carolina Office of Minority Affairs and what do you guys do just in general? Yeah, so our mission is really to foster the socioeconomic growth of the minority communities that we serve. Um, we're, we really focus on research and resources for the community. We're not a direct service, so what we do is we connect the different minority communities to resources throughout the state by partnering with different state agencies, nonprofits, associations that can provide those resources at either little to no cost or they can kind of um, send you to a place that can. So um, we're kind of the go-between and kind of bridge that gap. Um, currently, the commission has four minority divisions. Um, I oversee the Asian American and Pacific Islander division. We also have African American, Native American, and Hispanic Latino. Um, we also have um, two divisions that are dedicated to um, small minority business and faith-based outreach as well. Um, with that, we have a fantastic research division that puts out a lot of fact sheets and um, distributes a lot of information. People can send us a request for research and we're happy to provide that at no cost to the community. Um, a lot of the information that we pull is from the census, so it's very reliable information. Um, we also have a wonderful communications team where we have our own podcasts as well, where we try to um, connect with leaders in the community that can kind of um, give us an overview of what's going on and the, the greatest needs for the minority communities that we're serving. Awesome. So that's really a, a great overview of what you guys do at the commission. So as the program coordinator for um, your uh, section of Asian American Pacific Islander, tell us a little bit about what you are doing as that program coordinator. Yeah, so this is still a fairly new role for me. Um, I've been here for um, going on a year and a half now, so I've really been working on building community ties and trust within the Asian community. Um, they can be kind of siloed at times where, you know, there's, there's so many different cultures and ethnicities that are within the AAPI spectrum. So um, trying to reach out to all of them um, and trying to be culture, culturally, culturally sensitive um, to all the different groups as well has been, um, a big undertaking. So right now, um, I try to do face-to-face -face outreach. That's been 
the greatest way I've been able to connect with people on that personal level to let them know what we're doing. Um, so we attend a lot of events, festivals. Um, we help sponsor and fund those as well. Um, so really, and then obviously emails and then partnering with, with different groups like SC Legal that can kind of, that's doing the efforts in those minority communities to, to help their outreach efforts as well. Well, I'm sure there are challenges with um, starting a new um, division like you've done and being new and just really getting things going. Tell us a little bit about the challenges that you have faced, um, not just um, in the space of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, but just the newness of um, the division that you're coordinating. Yeah, so right now, um, South Carolina doesn't have a lot of AAPI specific resources. There's a lot of national resources, which is wonderful because everyone can, um, everyone can use those. Um, but I guess with the newness, the language barrier has been really hard as well. We have a lot of international students, older generations that live here as well. So um, we have great translation services for the Hispanic Latino community. So I'm really trying to mimic that and bring that over to the AAPI side. But again, there's so many languages, cultures, religions that encompass AAPI. Um, it's been a challenge. So that's really um, something I've been trying to work on to make sure that we can get the information out there to people that need it most. That's, uh, you got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, I know, so we do have a, a, you know, somewhat, I guess, robust um, community of Asian American um, Pacific Islanders. And I know, uh, you know, often we think of there being a much larger population of Asian American Native Hawaiian uh, Pacific Islander on the West Coast. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, sort of the difference there, or is there a difference in the approach that you take because of, um, you know, that geographic um, issue and just the population in general? Yeah, so I can really only kind of um, give an overview just on my personal experience. Um, I was born in North Carolina, but I actually grew up in Oregon. Um, so I grew up on the West Coast where it's much more diverse. There's a lot more resources available. Um, but I will say um, I never really sought out my AAPI community when I lived on the West Coast. Um, it was already kind of just there and present. So I feel like you didn't have to do a whole lot to see Asian presence. Um, here in South Carolina, I've been really pleasantly surprised what a strong AAPI community there is here. Um, and I've been able to go to several events and gatherings to where um, they've all been open to the public and there's just a really um, strong community that opens their arms to everyone. So I'm hoping that, you know, as time goes forward and the community here grows, um, people are able to enjoy and embrace the, the many cultures that we have here. Yeah, so it sounds like there is a good sort of reception from that community um, here in South Carolina. Can you tell us a little bit about how the program is being received just overall and in general? Yeah, I think it's been received um, really, population. Yeah, I think it's been received really well. I think people are surprised to hear that there is a commission for minority affairs. Um, we're one of only two states. I think it's us in Nevada. Um, Nevada has a more has a very high Hispanic Latino population, so their minority affairs is kind of geared towards them. So South Carolina, I think, is really leading the way in including um, multiple communities that are kind of um, underserved. So. Um, I mean, the communities here are just, they're, they're growing and they're, they're strong, so. Um. Yeah. Well, I know it's very new and um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, I know we're kind of observing what's referred to as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, but we also have, um, things that we refer to as awareness months. And so even though this is the heritage month, I know that y'all are doing a lot to, um, you know, bring awareness to the fact that we do have that segment of our population uh, here in South Carolina and, you know, what's going on with them, what can, you know, what you guys are doing um, that you've just described. Tell us a little bit about, 
you know, um, the awareness side of it and um, let me know. I've got some of your flyers here. Um, we can kind of look at those and see some of the events that are going on this month, but then also I'm sure you have things going on um, in general. Yeah, so the South Carolina Commission, we actually send over the proclamation to be sent to the governor's office each year to be signed for AAPI month. Um, so that's really wonderful. We can always add, we update the, the numbers and figures on the proclamation as well for the size of the community here, you know, how many businesses are AAPI owned and operated, um, things like that. The commission, um, like I stated before, we provide funding for a lot of events. So that's been really well received by the community as well. Um, we've had a lot of feedback that people want to see more AAPI events throughout the state and we're doing our best. Definitely. Funding is a huge thing for that. So once they find out that we have funding, um, that's kind of our, our foot in the door to, to reach out to these communities. So we try to be as supportive as possible if it, you know, the event fits within our mission and can really help with the socioeconomic growth. Um, but we have some great events that we've partnered with um, for AAPI Month that I think you have some flyers that you can kind yeah, of share yeah. with everybody. Let's see if I can share my screen here and let's look at some of these because it's, I know some of them are probably already over, but um, but you still have these that are coming up. So, oh, you've got art exhibition. Let's talk about these. Yeah, so tonight actually um, at the city of Greer, they're holding an art exhibit for over 12 AAPI artists. Um, we help put them in contact with um, some of the larger associations here that have a strong following. And so they were able to put together a really nice display. So tonight is actually the art reception from 6 to 8 p.m. at the City of Greer. So um, I'll be attending with my wonderful multicultural interns. So hopefully we can get some great photos and share those on social media with everybody. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, everybody said, so let me take a moment uh, right there to encourage our audience to follow the commission on uh, social media. That's always a great way to find out what's going on with any of our um, organizations and agencies here in South Carolina. So definitely uh, uh, check them out on social media and uh, let's go to the next one here. Okay. Okay. How about that? Yeah, we actually partnered with the Nickelodeon theater here in Columbia. Um, we're showing a AAPI based film every Tuesday in the month of May from 6.30. Two of those will have talk back Q&A sessions at the end with some um, prominent AAPI leaders. Um, Minari was last Tuesday. We had a professor from USC, uh, Dr. Sulgi Lee, um, who did a talk back session at the end on the Korean American experience, which was wonderful. Um, and that movie was really big during the um, anti-Asian hate movement in 2020 when kind of COVID was getting started and a lot of things shut down. So we had a great discussion around that movie. Um, tonight we have everything everywhere all at once that'll be showing. Um, that one's just going to be a film showing, um, but next Tuesday um, the movie The Lunchbox is a Southeast Asian film. Um, that one will have um, Ome Salma, who is the director of Food Share here in Columbia. Um, she'll be one of the leaders that'll be speaking afterwards, as well as the owner of um, Falafel King. So we've got some business owners and some prominent people that are going to be, you know, discussing the lunchbox. So definitely come out for that one. Um, we also have the Whale Rider, which is going to be the last Tuesday of the month. Um, and that's about the Maori community in um, New Zealand. So we were able to pick four movies that I feel like really encompass um, several different cultures. Um, so hopefully the community will, will enjoy those. And tickets are only $5. So if you need a cheap date oh. night or a fun night out for the family, um, the yeah. Well Rider I think is the most kid friendly. So if you have you know young children, that's definitely a good film to, to go and take them to. What a fantastic series. I bet you had a lot of fun uh, picking those out. Yeah, there were so many to choose from. Yeah, but the Nickelodeon has been really great with collaborating um, with us to make sure that we have a, a good lineup of movies to share with the community. Yeah. Well, now, is this the first time you've done this? 
This is the first time that the AAPI division has partnered with the Nickelodeon. Um, okay. We also had uh, movie showings for um, Hispanic Heritage Month as well as Black History Month. So um, we've done a lot to partner with them. We try to bring as many accessible um, events to the community at a low cost as possible. So like, like I said, I'm always for a movie. <laughs> it's a great date night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. What a great partner for you guys. Well, let's look at another one, the Tour of Tea. I, I'm so excited to hear about this, and that's upcoming next week. Yes, so next week, the Tour of Tea, um, we help sponsor this event. Um, Angela Young Sellers, the, the owner of Fit Columbia, she's helping to organize this with Five Points. Um, it's gonna be at the Five Points Fountain. They're gonna be showcasing six different teas from six different countries, um, and then pairing those with AAPI themed snacks as well. So um, this is one of the few events that's really nice because it's inclusive to a lot of different cultures. Um, you know, like I said before, we have a lot of events that are, you know, the Korean festival is wonderful, the Japanese festival in Greenville, but I really like this one because you get to explore um, a number of different cultures all in one. So it should be a really nice community tea tasting. I love it. Um, these flyers are just beautiful. Yeah, I've got um, somebody, I don't know, you may have done them yourself, but whoever's doing these flyers, um, they look wonderful. Thank you. Um, this is event... one that's already happened, right? Yes, so this was last Saturday. Um, this was the community launch for a national nonprofit. This is the state chapter um, for South Carolina of Make Us Visible. Um, they advocate for Asian American history in the K through 12 classroom. So um, they're doing a lot of important work to make sure that there's representation um, for kids that are growing up so that they can see themselves in the historical figures they're learning about. Um, and I actually volunteer my time um, as interim director for this nonprofit. So this is one that I is near and dear to my heart. Um, I became a mother this last year, so I'm really hoping um, that when he starts school, um, that AAPI history will be included in the curriculum. That's a wonderful organization. What a great mission. And I love that you've got that personal connection with it and also uh, a new little one that's going to be really benefiting from it. That's that's awesome. Make us visible SC. That's yes. great. And, uh, our audience needs to definitely remember that. And then this was the performance lineup. Um, this was great too, because we had a lot of different multicultural displays. We had um, the Filipino Association of Greater Columbia. They did some wonderful dances that are just traditional Filipino dances. Um, we had the Columbia Chinese Water Sleep Dancers that um, performed Legacy Martial Arts, put on a super cool and intense uh, display of board breaking and some other demonstrations, which was really cool. Um, we had a Singaporean string band, some strings attached, that played for us. Um, traditional Indian dance, which was a huge hit. Um, one of my favorites was the student panel. We had elementary, middle, and high school students talk about why Asian American history is important to them. Um, we also had um, Preston Tran, who's an Asian American student, he's 15, who came and did a set of songs and sang for us. Um, and then FASA, the Filipino American Student Association at um, USC, they did an interactive Filipino um, tinicling dance, which is with bamboo sticks. So um, really cool lineup. And I feel like the, the community was really receptive. Um, it took place during Soda City. So we had a, a really nice walkthrough of people that probably don't normally get to experience um, these different cultures. So it was really cool to see the community come together. Yeah, I bet that was a really great event. Um, wish I could have been there. That's such a great lineup. I was um, unfortunately um, out of town, but I would have, I'm uh, up in our Greenville office at uh, Legal Services, but I would have totally uh, come down to Columbia Museum of Art to, uh, to check that out. So it's good to know that you guys are doing um, these wonderful kind of events. And I know that it's not just during AAPI um, Heritage Month, you know, your job is really working on this throughout the year, and um, I think the your work with Make Us Visible SC is really a terrific part of what you do, just, you know, as a person, um, not just as the um, program coordinator. 
um, at the commission. So that's awesome. Well, I'm going to ask um, producer Kenneth to give you the uh, control so you can share your screen um, to show us the um, flyer that you guys have that gives really a lot of information about uh, this population here in South Carolina and what you guys are doing. Yeah, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So like I said before, we have an incredible research team here at the, the commission. Um, and they put together wonderful fact sheets that give a really nice overview of each of our minority populations. Um, so as you can see, there's a rather large population of um, Asian Americans here. Um, this number is going up. I think these facts and figures are from 2020. So we're getting these updated fairly soon to have some um, new information out. Um, but we have a very highly educated and um, a big part of the labor force um, here. So um, we also have, you know, the top five languages, um, income. Um, on the back page, we have some information on the median age of the AAPI community here, population share, um, educational attainment, home ownership and poverty. Um, so they, again, they really pull a lot of great information to give you a broad overview. Um, also, currently they're working on releasing a Asian American and Pacific Islander statistical profile that's hopefully going to be published soon that will be coming out. And that really gives a much broader overview of the state as a whole of what the Asian American population looks like here and how they participate within the community. Well, that's great. You know, we are going to um, link to these um, in our uh, show notes when we upload it to um, YouTube. So uh, hopefully everyone will be able to have access to this fact sheet, but also um, some of the flyers for the other events that are yet to come this month. <clears throat> I do, um, uh, if you don't mind, before we uh, finish up for today, if you can give our viewers the contact information if they want to learn more about what you're doing at the commission, but also um, any kind of reaching out uh, to the commission where they can, you know, contact y'all on your website, you know, email, your main phone number, that kind of thing. Yeah, so you can find all of our information on our webpage at cma.sc.gov. Um, we're located off of Stone Ridge Drive near the Riverbank Zoo. So we're local here in Columbia. You can always stop by our office if you have any questions. Um, again, our services are free to the community if you ever need research or have any questions. Um, I did want to mention too, we have a wonderful, each of our divisions has an advisory committee. Um, that's made up of um, different leaders within each of our communities. Mine has a lot of um, professors from USC, from Clemson. Um, we also have business owners, so just really people that are doing great things in the community, and they kind of help lead our discussion and give us insight um, into communities that we're maybe not the most familiar with. So shout out to our advisory board and our board of commissioners for always uh, helping us out. Um, our main phone number here, um, ooh, I don't have that one on me, but feel free to give me a call and I'm happy to send you to anybody here in the office if you have questions. Um, my work cell I always have on me, my phone number here is 803-563-1977. So you can also follow us on our social medias on Facebook and Instagram. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that information and, and being so um, willing to talk to folks. Um, uh, here in South Carolina and, and elsewhere as well. I think y'all are doing a great job with this. I know it's new. I know it's probably can be overwhelming when you're getting going, but it seems like y'all have just really taken off um, with this particular division. So I congratulate you on that for sure. Well, thank you so much, Susan. I appreciate you starting the conversation. We definitely want people to know we're here and we're, we're happy to help. So um, yeah. I think our community is just going to get stronger as, as time goes on. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we really thank you for being here with us today. And I also want to thank our audience for tuning in, whether you're live or on the replay on our YouTube channel. Um, I think this is great information. And definitely um, when you go to look at it, if you're, um, if you're going to go look at it after the live show or if you're just on the replay, 
you know, definitely share it out with people you know that'll be interested in what the commission's doing and particularly what they're doing with the Asian American Pacific Islander population here in South Carolina. I think it's great work and we really appreciate uh, what you guys are doing. I also want to remind our audience, um, as always, to tune in next Tuesday at noon and we'll be observing Older Americans Month, which is also in May. And we'll be talking about scams that are targeting seniors. Mm -hmm. Always an important topic. Um, we talk about this a lot, but it's always, um, you know, as always, Older Americans Month is a great time to get some reminders out and also bring to our folks who are out there in our Level Up Law audience information um, about some of the newer scams that are always coming up. You know, some scams are just the same over and over again. Mm -hmm. Scammers are clever and as things change, um, they change with what's going on in society, just like they did when COVID happened. So it's always something new coming up. We'll be talking about that next week um, on Level Up Law. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Again, thanks to Christine Curry, um, Program Coordinator at the South Carolina Commission of Minority Affairs for Asian American Pacific Islander Div Division. We really appreciate you sharing with us um, what's going on in this community and at the commission. So thank you so much. Happy AAPI Month, everyone. All right. Thanks so much. And that concludes today's episode of Level Up Law. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Susan.